All right, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Amanda here and sorry for the clickbait title, ha ha. <laughs> um, um, let me explain, let me explain. So seriously, um, I know that this is a clickbaity title and trust me, I'm not trying to be an asshole to anybody. I am the gym selfie and butt pic girl, or I used to be anyway, so don't worry about it. And I think that I'm trying to just come from the perspective here that there's more that you can do. And I remember really specifically, it was like 2014, I just started my Instagram and I saw literally everybody just doing, you know, body photos and butt over the, the bench press with the thong. And I was like, do I have to do that? I was literally just like, do I have to do that? And I thought I did for a little while. And yeah, like I've done bikini competitions and trust me, I know that most fitness influencers grew through just being motivating by showing their body and stuff like that. Also, not opposed to people utilizing that and showing that and being proud of that. It literally has nothing to do with me bashing on gym selfies and butt pics. It's not me bashing that, trust me, because I get it. However, I also understand that there is so much more available to you. Like there's so much more that you can do than just make a glute guide. Although you have an amazing body, like I almost made a glute guide and then I was like, is that in line with my bigger mission and vision? No, it's not. And that to me was enough, but I think a lot of people don't realize what's available to them, especially if you actually have a following on Instagram and you see so much more engagement on your butt body pictures than you do on a regular lifestyle picture. Like I have almost half, almost 600,000 followers and some of my lifestyle pictures will get like 10,000 likes where a photo of my body that's a gym selfie with my butt and it will get 40, 30, 40,000. And it's a massive difference. And so many people focus so heavily and rely so heavily on their social media following for their businesses when they're getting started. And I've learned over the last year that yeah, it's really awesome to have a social media following. It is really helpful to get new followers to potentially become you know, into your tribe and into your brand and they, you know, connect with your mission and then you're making a bigger impact. But then you're also, you know, maybe starting a business and maybe you're starting to do something entrepreneurial and then you have an ebook or a digital product or a course or a program. And you don't want to have to rely on your social media accounts because it can just become incredibly draining for your audience to see you talking about all the time. Because obviously you want to make sales, right? Like obviously that's a thing that you want to do. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to feel like you're being manipulative. You don't, you shouldn't feel guilty about it. We'll have a whole other money talk video later. Trust me, um, it's necessary. However, you don't want to have to rely on the place where you make connections to be the place that you also make sales. And I get that having more followers, more likes, more comments, more engagement, it's so much easier to do the, do the latter with the butt pics and the gym selfies. If you're a girl, maybe you're a guy and this is like you just doing shirtless selfies and stuff like that. And Brian and I talk about this all the time because it's so much easier, trust. And you can totally build a thriving business off of just that, depending on what your brand is and there's sirens out there, so ignore them. Depending on who you're talking to, depending on you know what who you're speaking to directly. Like for example, Rob Lipset, he's crushing his business. He, he's doing so well. And he still does a bunch of shirtless pictures and he's just like crushing the whole lifestyle fitness thing. Sorry, it's super loud, we'll cut this. So it can still totally work depending on who you're talking to and what feels really, really good for you. But if you're someone like me who is like, oh, there's so much more I wanna talk about and I don't really wanna be attracting guy followers that aren't really resonating with my message. Like I have a ton of male followers that aren't just necessarily following me for my body, like maybe you are or whatever, that's fine. Um, but there's maybe you came from the fitness stuff, but if you're here now and you listen to my podcast and you watch my videos and you read my captions and you send me messages like, hey, you have a good male audience who really you know, appreciates and is inspired by your stuff, like thank you for putting it out there, there's a different way to present yourself online. So a couple of things that I have done over the last year to almost transition like my image, um, posting less gym selfies and although that's still a part of what I do and it's nice to have them on there and I like them, like I feel good in the gym, feeling myself, take a picture, that's great. But I'm still trying to put in more lifestyle stuff more and then actually create a business that's not just for fitness people and that's not just directly focused on my body. So my business does not run on my body anymore. My business does not run because of the way that I look. 
My business does not thrive because of my aesthetics. It thrives because of my message, the quality of service that I can provide, um, the people that I'm attracting are inspired and excited about what I'm doing, so they connect to what I say rather than what I look like. And I think that's really tough for people to really understand. So especially if you're someone that's like, I don't have the body of this fitness influencer, I could never do that, and they think that's the only option for them, and then they feel stuck, maybe that's you, maybe you feel stuck because you're like, well, I don't look like that, I'm never gonna look like that, I don't really wanna look like that, so what am I gonna do over here? What's my option? And you're in this little bubble, like it's so small, like whoever you're subscribed to on YouTube right now, it's probably similar people, and I probably know exactly who you're subscribed to, and they're all my friends and I love them, but you're just in this bubble, right, of just the same type of people with the same type of posts, and you see something doing really well. But I've taken myself out of that almost, not that I'm better, but I'm just trying to follow people that are different in different industries, doing different things. So maybe someone who's in a beauty industry, maybe someone who has their own clothing line that's not a fitness clothing line, maybe someone that has their own online products that's also serving entrepreneurs, maybe someone that has a digital course about some sort of like tech thing, whatever. You can see that there's so many options available to you depending on what you want to do. And there's also a couple other people that I follow like Jason Phillips, Jordan Syatt, a couple of other people that don't lead with their body but they still have a thriving fitness business. So really think about it. Get out of your bubble, figure out what you really want, figure out who you want to be talking to, figure out you know what kind of content is going to go more viral on social. If you want to grow, there's going to be things that go more viral than not. So obviously booty photos do freaking better than a regular lifestyle one. However, if your edge isn't your body, then it doesn't have to be. And even if your edge is your body, you don't want it to be, it doesn't have to be. So let your edge be something else. So what's your edge? What is your thing that people know you for? What is the thing that you can step into if you're really good at something else? Um, maybe you're really skilled at music, maybe you're really skilled at dancing, maybe you're a really skilled videographer, maybe you're a really skilled tech person, or maybe you're a really skilled writer. How do you like just step into that? and be that person and let people see that. And you don't have to be in the little box of whatever you think you have to be. Get your edge, step into that, decide to be that person. And when you decide to be that person, you're, you're gonna be known for something that's more than just what you look like and you don't have to fall into the trap of only having body videos and booty pics and all that stuff be your driver of your revenue for the rest of your life. This is something that I'm very passionate about because it's, it was really stressing me out for such a long time and I didn't wanna to have to stay stuck in that cycle. Um, I didn't wanna to have to stay in that bubble. And when you break the bubble, although there's other things that work, there's that does work technically. The quality of the people that come to you and say yes to following you is going to be so much more deep if you can get them to know you, like you, trust you, and your edge is something that's more than just tap because I like what you look like. Again, not bashing anybody. I used to do this. I'll still post gym photos and stuff like that, but no, be known for something amazing. Be known for something that's more than just what you look like. It's going to make you feel really fulfilled and it's going to allow you to understand that you don't have to fall into the box of what that is. So hope this video was helpful. Sorry if it offended anybody, but not really because I'm being unapologetic as fuck. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I love y'all. See you later. Like the video if you liked it. Thumbs up, share it with everybody. Yeah.